Uh, Chairman Hansen, Vice Chairman Nelson, and members of the committee, my name is Melissa Patak, and I appreciate the opportunity to testify regarding SB 444. I represent the Motion Picture Association of America, the trade association for the major producers and distributors of filmed entertainment content across all platforms from theatrical motion pictures to programming for cable, over-the-air broadcast, and satellite television, and the Internet. Our member companies include the Walt Disney Company, Fox Filmed Entertainment, NBC Universal, Paramount Pictures, Sony Pictures Entertainment, and Warner Brothers, and CBS is an associate member. I'm here to explain why we oppose SB 444 and to offer our suggestions for amending the bill. Anti-slap laws, which exist in some form, as has previously been said, um, are present in 29 states, and they're very important to our member companies as entertainment companies are frequently sued on a variety of theories from someone who believes they were not portrayed accurately in a motion picture to a news outlet over the reporting of a news story. These types of lawsuits implicate the First Amendment and are often filed because plaintiff, uh, a plaintiff disagrees with what the defendant, one of our companies or an affiliate of our companies, has said or disseminated. The ability of the defendant to bring an anti-slap motion can can resolve the case efficiently and economically and preserve the defendant's First Amendment rights. The bill pending before this committee moves uh, Nevada's anti-slap law in the wrong direction. Um, it would make the anti-slap motion a complex two-part process, and I think that really hasn't been discussed. That's one of the major changes. It bifurcates the process. The first proceeding would be over whether the matter is of a public concern, and if the uh, moving party establishes that, then it goes to the, to the, to the so-called merit. So it's really a two-part and really increases the complexity of a slap motion rather than what the slap motion is designed to do, which is um, expedite a resolution of, uh, of the case. Uh, the bill sets an unrealistic time barrier for the filing of an anti-slap motion. Uh, many defendants, as has previously been said, um, won't have the ability to comply with that short 20-day requirement. Um, the bill also narrows the issues that could be subject to an anti-slap motion from an issue, an, an area of public, an issue of public interest to an issue of public concern. We also believe that narrows the focus. Um, when a plaintiff files a lawsuit that implicates the First Amendment rights of a defendant, the plaintiff should have sufficient information that supports his or her claim. When the defendant files the anti-slap motion, the plaintiff should have to come forward with evidence that is sufficient to support every element of his or her claim. It is important that the court have enough information determine, to determine that the plaintiff can establish a legitimate claim. The bill also took us by surprise since the legislature uh, amended Nevada's anti-slap law only in 2013. Um, we also are not aware of any court decisions that could be motivating this effort to roll back a very good law. Uh, but to the extent the legislature has the desire to revisit the state's law, uh, we respectfully request you consider turning to your neighbor uh, to the west, to California. The California anti-slap law enacted in 1992 strikes a good balance. It allows the defendant the opportunity to seek dismissal of a case that seeks to stifle the defendant's First Amendment rights, and it does not dissuade plaintiffs from bringing claims in the first instance. And I'm happy to talk further about California's law and also to go into, um, I have some examples of cases that have been filed against our companies and how the slap motion has um, work to resolve these cases expeditiously. Thank you so much for the opportunity to speak um, and appreciate your consideration.